Well, Oklahoma's Department of Human Services deals daily with many of the stresses Oklahoma families are under. And this year, DHS is serving a record number of people. Earlier, I sat down with the agency's director, Howard Hendrick, to talk about the impact the economy is having on state services. Howard, how big is the Department of Human Services here in the state? Uh, we represent a statewide an agency of employees of about eight, a little less than 8,000 employees. Uh, 67, 68 percent of our employees have a college degree. Uh, we have a budget of a little over two billion dollars counting federal funds. But in terms of the state appropriation, we're a little less than 10 percent of the state's total appropriations to all the different agencies that are appropriated. A, a, a large agency that also serves a lot of people. Right. In the last year, we had a record year in 2009 with the economy being uh, challenging as it was. 2008 was actually the record year before that. We served less than a million Oklahomans in just the two core programs of food stamps and Medicaid, SNAP, or Med as food stamps are sometimes interchangeably. But during 2009, uh, we had almost a million too, 1.17, something like that. A uh, million Oklahomans came through our doors and were certified for at least one month during calendar year 2009. Uh, that's an increase of uh, about 170,000 people in one year, people who've never come through our doors before, uh, lost their jobs, or they got cut back on the hours that they were permitted to work. And so as a member of the working poor, they, they needed some help to uh, supplement uh, their incomes. And, and if my demographics is right, that's almost one in three Oklahomans. That's right. About uh, 3.6 million Oklahomans, a little less than 1.2 million Oklahomans were certified for at least one month. Now, you mentioned the SNAP program, the food stamps. I think there's a lot of services people may not realize come through DHS. Can you kind of just give me a broad view? Well, uh, in terms of the family support, we try to support families economically. So, for example, uh, the eligibility determination for Sooner Care or Medicaid is done by the department. Uh, the eligibility determination for uh, food stamps or SNAP is done as well. And then we have the TANF program, which, is, which used to be the OCAS assistance program. Still is a little bit, but it's kind of a very, really a shadow of what it used to be. You know, in the early 90s, we had maybe 35 or 40,000 people on it. Today, we have less than 5,000 people. Now, seeing a decreasing number of people on some of these programs, is that maybe agency-wide? Well, the, the, that one program is really a result of welfare reform. The other programs are at record le high levels. Food stamps and Medicaid are at very high levels. We've never had uh, more than 480,000 people on SNAP until this year. Now we're at 567,000 at the end of December. Uh, so it's uh, we've had just an explosion in the last six months to nine months of people who lost their jobs and came in. And our staff has done an incredible job with that. They, they've uh, they're carrying literally about 700 new Oklahomans every business day during calendar year 2009 came in and were certified for a benefit. These are people that had never been in our offices before. And our staff has done it with really the lowest record, lowest error rate, highest accuracy rate in our region and the highest accuracy rate in our state's history, actually. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about policy. What would you say to those that would say, oh, food stamps, well, those people just need to go get a job and not be on food stamps? Well, probably about 70% of the adults who receive food stamps have earned income. And a significant portion of the other 30% of the adults uh, are disabled, have disabilities, social security disabilities, something of this nature. Uh, about half of the recipients are children. So, uh, you know, most, most kids aren't able to work. And uh, the average benefit is only about $4.40 per person per day. The benefit is graduated. So if you have more income, you have a smaller benefit. If your income is less, you have a bigger benefit. So uh, the, the eligibility standards really haven't changed for 25 years or so. They've always been about 130% of the federal poverty guidelines. So if you're at 125% of the federal poverty guidelines for a household of three, uh, the federal poverty guidelines would be about uh, $19,000. 130% would be maybe 22, 23,000. If you're under that, you might get a small benefit, 20 or $30 a month. If you're at $12,000, you have a bigger gap, it might be a bigger amount, three or $400 a month. So it just depends upon your income standard, and it's not intended to be all of your food bill. But you know, kids are not going to be able to learn at school if they're not fed well. Uh, we see the demand on the food banks for both regional food banks in Oklahoma being at unprecedented levels, and it's true for the SNAP program as well. In in 2009, uh, we spent about 570 million dollars in round numbers for the SNAP program. 
we project that for this year we'll spend a little over $800 million in SNAP benefits. So it's all federally funded, uh, but it's just a matter of trying to meet the needs of people who work, mostly working poor. Certainly some of the things we are seeing right now are the result of a downturn in an economy. But are there other causes behind some of the symptoms that we're seeing in this site? We do know, and this is, uh, this is really kind of a true for the whole country, family structures have a big impact upon uh, economic viability of families. And when families break up, uh, it's more difficult to support a household with one income supplemented by child support that comes in from another income uh, than it is to have both partners together and really working together to make a healthy family. And so we see this across the country. It's not unique to Oklahoma. And it's not really unique to the United States. Actually, the out-of-wedlock birth rate in Great Britain is a little higher than it is in the United States, even though the United States out-of-wedlock birth rate is now about 40 percent. How have the state budget cuts that we're seeing across the state government, how have they affected the agency? Well, they've affected us quite a bit. We, of course, got quite a bit of uh, press about the cutting of the senior nutrition sites. We didn't lose any federal funds, which was really the main criteria for making cuts so far. We, as I said, our total budget's a little over $2 billion. Our appropriations less than $500 million. So uh, all of all those state dollars are very precious because they are able to be secure federal funds. And if we begin cutting now, as we will probably soon have to do, cutting into these state dollars even deeper, we're not just cutting $1 of state revenue into the state. We're cutting 3 and $4 with the loss of that $1. So uh, we're, I'm, I'm very concerned that the future cuts that will probably be necessary, uh, unless there's some other significant structural reforms, like uh, what can the legislature do for uh, all, all of state government to uh, lower our retirement costs for our workforce? What can they do to lower our health care costs for our workforce? Those kinds of things significantly help all agencies uh, meet this crisis that we're all trying to, to meet. Uh, all the agencies are paying 15 or 16 percent of their payroll costs for retirement costs. Well, no private company would pay that high of a retirement cost. And if we were going back just to 2007 or 6's level in retirement costs, uh, it would be a significant amount of savings for all of us. Uh, the, our, our agency's retirement costs have gone from about 24 million to 48 million in the last five years. And so, you know, if we just went back to 24 million dollars where we were five years ago, that $24 million of savings would go a long ways to not having to cut jobs or not cutting services or doing other things. And the same is true for health care costs. Uh, our agency's health care costs seven years ago were about $25 million. This year they're about $75 million. So a $50 million increase in seven years for health care costs is staggering. And, and if we were just to go back to 2007's level of health care costs, uh, it would go a long ways to helping us meet a lot of the budget crisis that all of us are facing. And, and certainly some hard questions with really no easy answers. That's right. It, uh, it's going to take a lot of active management on the central operations of the government when you're talking about personnel and those kinds of things in terms of what are the things we can do to make employment more viable. One of the reasons why we're losing jobs globally is we're not having a, an economically efficient health care system. We don't have an economically efficient retirement compensation arrangement. And that makes us less competitive globally as well. A final question. You're a former Republican lawmaker, served in the Senate. You are now the longest serving, as I understand, longest serving cabinet secretary across the nation uh, holding this position. Why do you do this? Well, I think I'm inspired really by our, our, our workforce. We do a lot of great, we have a lot of great employees that do uh, work far more than people would ever imagine. I think about uh, child welfare workers, I think about uh, child support and, uh, services workers, I think about our developmental disability staff, people who are out there every day uh, meeting families who are in crisis. And it's inspiring to, to sit down and talk to some of our workers and hear their stories about how they've been able to intervene in a family who was in crisis when they were at a, at a parent who was going through a drug problem, they were able to get them into some treatment, uh, provide the food they need. And so really reaching out to our most vulnerable citizens is, is it's really an honor. So uh, I get inspired really from our employees. They, they just continue to amaze me. And uh, so I hang around a little longer. All right, Harold, we certainly appreciate you visiting you. with us. Nice to be with you.